welcome to Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about the first law of thermodynamics and changes in internal energy. And there's a lot of things to learn here about sign conventions and terminology. So in this video, we're just going to introduce all of the ideas that are needed to solve problems with internal energy in the first law of thermodynamics. And then in my next video on calculating changes in internal energy, we're actually going to do some practice problems. Okay, so what are we talking about here? Well, the basic idea is we're thinking about the transfer of energy between the system and the surroundings. What do I mean by that? Well, the system is just anything we're interested in. So if you're in the chemical laboratory, right, and you're using a Bunsen burner to heat some chemical sample, our system might be that sample. And the surroundings is the laboratory, the room, everything else. So the system is just the thing we're studying, and the surroundings is everything else. And if you take a look, at this example below, you see that we have a system, which is a cup of ice water, and the surroundings, which is everything else. And what's going to typically happen, right, if you have a cup of ice water, is we're going to have heat flow from the surroundings into that cup of water. So that's what happens, right, if you have a cup of cold water in your room, you're going to have heat flow into that cold water and slowly warm it up over time. And that's actually increasing the internal energy of that system. And so when heat flows into a system, we say that's a positive change in internal energy. On the other hand, if heat flows out from a system, we call that a negative change in internal energy. So I'm going to go through a few slides here that introduce these concepts in more details. So what we're thinking about is the transfer of energy. Now, here I have another example of a system in the surroundings, right? We have the system, in this case it's a tea kettle that's steaming, right? And the surroundings, which is our kitchen. And that tea kettle, which is steaming, is putting off heat energy into its surroundings, the kitchen. And it's transferring energy from the system to the surroundings. And when that happens, we say that the change in internal energy is negative. The internal energy is how much energy is in our system. And our system is this tea kettle. It's giving off heat energy. And since it's giving off heat energy, its total balance of energy is decreasing. Meanwhile, the energy of the kitchen is increasing. How can you see that? Well, you could know that the temperature of your tea kettle is dropping. That means it's reducing in energy. Meanwhile, your surroundings, the kitchen, is going to get a little warmer, and that's increasing in energy. So we say that the sign change here is negative. All right, so stay with me here. We're going to talk a little bit more about these heat transfers. We could imagine the heat transfer going the other way, like with that cup of ice water. If energy is going from our surroundings, the kitchen, into our ice water, we say that's a positive change in energy. Why? Because our system, the ice water, is increasing in temperature. It's getting more internal energy. So a system gaining energy from its surrounding increases its energy. And we say that's a positive change in internal energy. Now, regardless of the energy flow, whether your energy flow is going from your system to your surroundings, or the other way, from your surroundings to your system, there's no total change in energy. The total change in energy is always zero, and that's really what the first law of thermodynamics says. It says energy is always conserved. So sure, maybe your cup of ice water gets warmer, but that's at the expense of energy in your kitchen. Or maybe your tea kettle puts off energy to the surroundings, but that's not going to change the total energy in the room. So the total energy of any system is conserved. So for example, you could see a nuclear bomb go off, and it releases all this heat and light, and you think, wow, the energy in here is really increasing. But in fact, the energy in the universe stays constant all the time. And that's really what the first law of thermodynamics says. And we've talked so far about transferring energy, mostly as heat. But there's actually two ways we can transfer energy. We can transfer energy either as heat or as work. And the first law of thermodynamics, when we write it down as a mathematical equation, tells us that delta E, which is our change in internal energy, is equal to the heat, the flow of heat from the system to the surroundings, plus the work, the flow of work from the system to surroundings. Okay, so how can we add energy to something through doing work? Well, one good example is pumping up a soccer ball. If you've ever pumped up a soccer ball, you know it takes energy to add that air into the soccer ball. So what you're doing is you're increasing the energy the soccer ball has at the expense of, you know, the chemical energy that you have that's powering your muscles. So you can do work on a system and increase the energy there. On the other hand, we can heat it, as we've been talking about before. And if you want to know the change in the internal energy of something, you have to take into account any changes in heat and any changes in work. And that's what this equation here is telling us. Delta E, which is the change in internal energy, is equal to any changes in heat we have and any changes in work that we have, any work done on the system 
or another way to put that, any work done by the system. Let's take a closer look at this Q and W and what signs those variables would take on in different circumstances. So, if you have energy flow from your system to your surroundings, that is say you have a hot tea kettle cooling down, we say that's a negative change in energy. And that means that if uh, we're talking about that heat transferred in the case of the tea kettle, that, that has a negative change. On the other hand, anytime we have work flowing, work or energy flowing from the surroundings to the system, we say that's a positive change in internal energy because we're increasing the internal energy of our system and that's the thing we're studying interested in. So there's really four ways that we can talk about these changes. The first is we can say that work is done on the system. And an example of working done on the system is pumping up a soccer ball. And so when we pump up that soccer ball, we're increasing the internal energy of that soccer ball. And we say that that has a positive change in internal energy. On the other hand, we could have work done by the system. And so work done by the system is just the opposite process, right? If I can do work on the soccer ball by pumping it up, well, the soccer ball can actually do work on the surroundings by deflating. So work done by the system is just when we have our system doing work on the surroundings. And an example of that would be letting air out of our soccer ball. And we say that's a negative change. Why is it negative? Well, if we're letting air out of the soccer ball, it's basically the reverse process of what we started with. And that means the internal energy of our soccer ball is decreasing. All right, then we can talk about heat flows and their signs. If you have heat flowing to a system, like that ice water warming up, then we say that's a positive change in internal energy because it's gaining heat. Our system is gaining heat and so its overall energy is increasing. And an example of that is ice water warming up. Okay, the last sort of change we can have. We can have heat flow from a system. So there, we're thinking about the tea kettle again. If the tea kettle is heating up our surroundings, heat's going from our system to our surroundings. And we say that's a negative change in internal energy because the heat energy in our tea kettle is dropping. And an example of that is hot water cooling down, just like you have in the case of the tea kettle. So this has been sort of a conceptual introduction to thinking about heat transfer and internal energy. I recommend you check out my next video, Calculating Changes in Internal Energy, and we'll see some more examples of this flow of heat back and forth. This is something that takes a little time to get your head around, and it's a good idea, in addition to watching this video, to read through your textbook to try to understand this a little better. So in Calculating Changes in Internal Energy, we'll actually use that equation I showed you to solve some problems. So check out that video next, and hopefully that gives you a better idea of what we're talking about.